Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at one of my favorite random parking lots because guess what? We have that something new from Toyota. This is a 2021 Toyota Highlander. The new thing is this is a sport trim, the XSE Highlander. First time ever seen, but before we get into this three row midsize SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. The Highlander. It's been in Toyota's lineup for so many years and really has been a go-to for people that need a little bit extra room and a little bit extra versatility. Now, when you look at the competition in that midsize segment and the competition, I promise you, is fierce, more fierce than ever before, the Highlander is doing something that none of the rest are doing, offering so many different variations, so many different trims. It's just like Burger King. You could have your Highlander exactly your way whether you want to go hybrid, hybrid front-wheel drive, hybrid all-wheel drive, limited, XLE, or this new XSE trim. Now, many of the Toyota aficionados would know that when you do XSE, you are getting that extra sport styling and some sport features to the vehicle. And really, this Highlander totally fits perfectly into that point. What I want to find out is, is it though really a true sport performance three-row midsize SUV, or is this something more of just a styling feature? And is it the one to buy when you're looking at the variety of midsize three-row SUV? So let's go ahead, let's dive into this 2021 Highlander XSE, and guess what? We have it fully loaded with all-wheel drive, first time ever here on Rady's Rides. Let's go check it out. Right off the bat, the styling. New for this generation, and like I said, when it comes to XSE, it falls right in between XLE and the limited trim. At the front of the business, you're gonna get standard projection LED headlights. We have them turned on to kind of blind you right now as you're watching this video. And we have LED daytime running lamps. Now, when it comes to the XSE package, right off the bat, you're gonna see a big feature. This whole front fascia is unique to the XSE trim. So what you're gonna get is a little bit of gloss black. I like the way it styles nicely with the rest of the front lower bumper area. You do have some functionality here, so we're not gonna have to zonk that. And what I also like, it's just a little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. Now, as you kind of slide across, you do have uh, fog lights low. That's really gonna brighten up the road in front of you at night. And very, very aggressive front lip splitter here, or lip spoiler on this SUV, something that you just don't see on a Highlander, and now you do for the first time. As we kind of slide across, not only are you getting a unique lower portion, which is functional, and you can see how we have some of that nice gunmetal gray on the bottom portion here with some of that flat silver that goes across the front, you're also going to get a unique grill to the XSE trim. And Lori will show off just the full functionality of that grill. It is gloss black, but I think they did a good job balancing the gloss black with some of this flat color surface as well. It's not too heavy, not too shiny. You got that Toyota badge, of course, in the center. And from the corner, it's kind of cool how this top portion has the body color because it makes it look like it's extended just a little bit further out to give it a sporty style. So if you're looking for a midsize that has a sporty look, right off the bat, you could check that box off. Now, when you get up onto the hood, you don't get a bulge, but what you do is you do get a dip. So there's a nice little U-shape indentation on the hood, very stylish. And I kind of am I'm liking the way that they went with the U-shape indentation rather than having a bulge. The rest of it is gonna rise up and everything of course is going towards those A pillars. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we getting on XSE? You're getting these 20 inch wheels. These are unique to the trim, machined aluminum with some gloss black, multi-spoke design overall. I think it fits the style of this SUV. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what is the size of the tire setup on this? You're looking at 235 on the width and a nice meaty 55 series sidewall. Because this is an XSE trim, not only is it for looks, they actually did some re-engineering of the chassis and the four shock absorbers, all four corners have been kind of tweaked to give you some extra handling. They even beefed up, guess what? The anti-roll bars. That's stuff that you only hear about on sports cars, supercars, and race cars. They actually did some tweaking to this because they say that this is not a pretender, that this actually will perform like no other Highlander before it. A little bit of flat black. I kind of wish they would have color matched this on the XSE trim. So I am going to zonk that. It isn't too high, but 
I think we'd all agree it would be much cleaner, all nice bright silver. I do like the way the headlight housing extends clean into that fender. And as we go down the side, being an XS E trim, you're gonna get blacked out on the A pillar. So this is your A pillar. It goes in order, A pillar up front, nicely flat black. It, I think that gives it a, a clean look rather than doing a bunch of gloss. You do have gloss black painted on the mirror caps with your turn singles. We have these nice gloss black flushly mounted roof rails. What that's gonna do is it's gonna cut down on wind noise and it's also gonna cut down on being kind of just that boring style SUV. It gives it a little bit sportier look with them being closer to the actual roof line. Some gloss black. I love the body line up top, but my favorite body line on this new generation of Honda, of, of Highlander, is gonna be along the doors here. The way it kind of raises up and then it gives you a nice flared fender look. What's interesting is that this actually mimics what's on the Sienna and it kind of has a little bit of Toyota Super there. I know you're gonna think I'm crazy for saying that, but it has that overall flow and they did that on purpose to match the other vehicles. Now, as we come into the rear, you get a nice size quarter window. I'm so glad that they just went flat black on the treatment around the windows rather than just gloss black the whole thing. Coming towards the rear, you are gonna have that thicker anti-roll bar underneath all the sheet metal to stop some of that body roll. And then unique on the XSE, you have this nice low roof spoiler that extends out. You can see it's got a great design to it. Color match shark fin antenna. You do have a rear wiper and we are gonna zonk that. We need to get that out of here. The way they did the taillights, super clean. Extends out nicely. And what's interesting is if you look at a RAV4 and you look at the Sienna and you look at this Highlander, very similar on the design, makes it all kind of blend in. I like the way they smoke it a little bit. Just smoke, dark smoke, just to kind of make it look extra sporty. We drop down, of course, you're gonna get your Highlander badge, your XSE with all wheel drive. And then this whole rear bumper area is unique with the exhaust. So you're gonna have this twin outlet exhaust on one side. Would have been great to have it on both sides. So we're gonna do a half zonk. Since they got the exhaust right on this side, should have put two on that side, but I do like the nice aggressive rear bumper to kind of match that front bumper. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering our XSE. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod, which I am gonna still zonk that. I understand that hydraulic struts will wear, wear out, but tires also wear out as well and you have to replace those. But the good news is they do move that all the way over to the passenger side. Now underneath the hood, you are gonna get that familiar face. That's that naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6. Not the sexiest of engine covers, but also not the worst either. The good news is you're getting that great, reliable Toyota power. 295 horsepower, 263 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. No CVTs. Get out of here, CVTs. Zero to 60 in about 6.7 seconds. Quarter mile zooms by at 15.3 seconds. Top speed is 115 miles an hour. The vehicle weighs around 4,200 pounds. MPGs around 21 in the city, 29 on the highway. And the great news, like I said, is you're gonna have that all-wheel drive setup. Now the system is front-wheel drive biased. What that means is it'll be just the front wheels getting power. Once they detect slip, then they will send power to the rear wheels to give you that all-wheel drive reassurance that everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. But while we go ahead, let's fire up this Highlander and hear what that exhaust sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside this 2021 XSE trim. I know you're saying to yourself, Joe, I've been thinking about a Highlander, but I've also been thinking about some of the others that are in the midsize SUV segment. I didn't even know they had an XSE trim. Thank you so much, Joe, for bringing it to us here on Radies Rides. Well, first of all, you're very welcome. Second of all, you're probably saying, well, how much is it? MSRP on this fully loaded one with the red interior, with the all-wheel drive, you're looking around $46,000. Let's see what you get for the money to those door, door panels. Now, what I absolutely love is the red interior just makes this whole vehicle come alive. You have the soft material up top, which is dark, and that's fine. But as you come down, you're going to have a little bit of flat black, 
and then that bright red just really pops nicely. Some silver trim, looking classy. Now the door pocket is a little tight. So if you're gonna go Chipotle burrito, no guac. Save the guac, and you know what? Guac costs extra anyway, so you could put that money towards something else. But other than that, great job on the door panel. Coming from the door panel to the dash, here's the new changes. So soft touch with XSE, you're gonna get the red trim. We have the optional JBL sound system. You do have some faux carbon fiber, it actually doesn't look so bad. And in a sport trim, I'm okay with it. Uh, as you work your way down, I like the way they brought some silver. You do have the official Highlander Twinkie tray. So you could easily fit 15 to 16 Twinkies in there. Just don't overstuff it and you'll be okay. Love the soft material, the red stitch work. And then as we work our way, here's your infotainment. Now, the sad news in the Zonk is if you go XSE, you get the smaller infotainment. So that's an eight inch infotainment system screen, which guess what? Really is not super small. If you want larger, you're gonna have to go with a different trim. But if you wanna stick sport, that's what you get. You get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Navigation, is it a touch screen? Of course it's a touch screen. You also have your buttons easily located that you could go through all your different information. Of course, on Ready's Rides, we're rocking out to 80s on eight. Go back to home, pull up your menu. You got everything easy peasy and I like the way they brought in that red graphic color as well on the infotainment system side of things. Now let me go ahead and throw it into reverse so you can see the backup camera. The good news is it does take up all eight inches so you're using all eight inches. That's the good news. The bad news is there's no trajectory besides the solid lines and it's a little grainy but other than that I do like the way it takes up all eight inches of the screen size. Throw it in the park and we're right back again. You are going to get heated seats, no ventilated seats. That's a Zonk at $46,000. What's not a Zonk is you're getting dual climate control, and I love the feel of the switch gear in here. It does have a very, very nice touch, especially in the center here. You got your two AC vents, your start-stop button. We have another tray, so if you want to put the Snickers, make this one your devoted Snickers tray. Easily going to fit six Snickers in there. Plus, look at the trap door. Take that out, and what you're able to do is you can run cords through here if you want, because um, you have that versatility of all this cargo room, even for the small things. And if you wanna put that back, we'll put that back some other time. Nice little slot here. Obviously, put some more snacks. I would say just dump a one pound bag of M&Ms in there, and then you're good to go for your M&Ms. We have a USB, 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 three USBs, and a 12 volt. So they got you covered, and I like the way they have the ports covered with these nice little doors. Two cup holders. This is going to control that eight speed automatic transmission. You can manually shift with the actual shifter if you want to go through your eight speed automatic transmission that way. Key fob, Highlander, standard key fob. I wish they would have done something a little sporty on it. Maybe make it bring some silver or something, but there's your buttons on the back. You do have your switch to go through your different drive modes. Plus, of course, with the all wheel drive, you have your mud and sand and rock and dirt, or you just push to keep it in normal. You got a little bit of a extra set of buttons here, snow, shut the traction control off, your hill descent control, and that pesky auto start stop feature. This is, I would say, semi soft to almost hard on the material, but I do like the stitch work, and what I do really like is, look at that, there's your wireless charging pad. Nicely placed, and I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, what happens if I wanna get stuff in there? Do you have to go like that? Oh, oh. My hand's stuck. No, just kidding. Flip it up. Look at all that room that we have in there. You have a peanut tray. You have another 12 volt. And you could easily put a super big gulp. Just leave this flipped up. Super big gulp. Get one of those extra long straws that kind of twist all over the place. And then you could just like sip while you're drinking and not even move your head. That's the benefit of this Highlander. Put that back. Put that back. Seats. My favorite thing. I love the color, the red, the dark material. You're going to get Electric assist for the passenger, electric assist for the driver. Would have been nice to have the extra five horsepower and go red seatbelts. Where's my, where's my red seatbelts? It's a, it's a race SUV. I would like some red seatbelts, extra five horsepower, but not in this Highlander XSE. Standard sunroof, I'm okay with that. I don't need panoramic, but I know some of you do. Put that in the comment section, how you feel about that. Would you zonk it? But being six feet tall, plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room. I do like the way they have it set up in here. Come over, over to the business end. I want to show you behind the wheel of this Highlander XSE. All right, guys, business time. 
There's your power seat controls, nicely done. Even the lower lumbar feels ultra, ultra good. And the seats are comfortable. They do a great job with balance of comfort. There's your switch gear and the overall appearance of them. Like I said, with the two-tone material is absolutely fantastic. Steering wheel is gonna be your standard Toyota style steering wheel. Horn button, not the sexiest. A Little bit of gloss black. Would have been nice to have something here, maybe like XSE or Sport or something. Steering wheel though, I love the stitch work. Nice leather, flat black on the buttons. No paddles. That is very surprising. Look, you could do this, but you can't shift because there's no paddles. That kind of makes zero sense to me since this is a sport trim. So I am gonna zonk that. But I do like the silver and the dash. I think it's balanced nicely. Analog tack, analog speedometer. You got that seven inch digital display in the center and you could go through a whole cornucopia of information you could toggle through, which is really nice. And on top of that, watch this. You got your different modes, sport, normal, eco, hug a tree. Just make sure it's not a pine tree or a palm tree because those hurt. And because we have all wheel drive, mud and sand, rock and dirt, and then back to normal. So very, very easy to use and super clean. Why don't we go ahead, let's get to the mid row and see if your passengers are gonna enjoy being sporty with you in this XSE Highlander. All right guys, mid row time in this three row SUV. And guess what? The sporty fun continues because you're gonna get that same great color combo with the black and the red. Backs of the seats all the way around. And if you're wondering, is this leather? No, this is that faux leather that uh, Toyota uses, but really, really durable and feels just like the real thing. And the good news is no cows had to lose their life to make these wonderful seats. You do have a good size pocket back here. Easily put some Slim Jims, some Twizzlers, maybe one of those, you ever seen one of those like three pound, four pound bags that they sell at Costco of Twizzlers? Just shove that in there. And the great news is the Twizzlers match the seats. So it's like a match made in heaven. Back seat area on the back of the console, you do have those AC controls. Easy to figure out, a little bit of gloss black, no big thing. Down below, you do have USB. Now, the bad news is, is that I don't think it's as versatile and flexible as the competition when it comes to where the ports are located and how ease of use is, but you do have it back here, which is the good news. Seats feel great. Can you slide them? Let's see. Yep, I think I got it. And then of course the seats are gonna be able to recline as well. You got the AC vent located up top. So only challenge is when you're sitting up straight, it's gonna kind of blast you at the top of your head. Would have been nice to have some AC vents either in the actual frame rail or in the back portion of that center console. You have a nice little party tray here. You could fill this up with melted cheese and you have a little nacho area and you could just dip and eat, dip and eat. They are captain's chairs, armrests. I'm gonna have Zonkum because it's about a half, a half armrest. I need just a little bit more to rest my arm, but why don't we go ahead? It's that time, I know you all love seeing me cram back there. Let's get into the third row and see how usable it is in this Highlander. All right guys, time to get into the back. Real simple, move the seat out of the way and you're just gonna climb in. I like the way that they put plenty of plastic for the real estate there. It is tight back here. So I'm gonna try to straighten this up a little bit to give myself some more room. You can adjust the angle of the rear seats, which is great. You do have AC vents, which is perfect too. The only zonk is, well, there's a couple zonks back here. Big zonk is no USB. The other major zonk is what happened? Did they run out of red material at the Toyota factory? Why are these rear seats black? I don't get that. And then of course, being six feet tall, my knees are a little too high for the journey because I'm gonna be eating them the whole entire time. But why don't we go ahead? Other than that, it's for smaller people. Why don't we go ahead, let's check out the cargo space and see what kind of room we have in the Highlander XSE. All right guys, time to get in the cargo area. Obviously one of the most important areas in an SUV. You hit the button right under the T for Toyota and guess what? It rises up, electric assist, kind of like a medium speed. The great news is, even with the third row up, you're getting a generous amount of room. This is actually 16 cubic feet of space. You can see that JBL subwoofer that's gonna thump a thump thump as you're going down the road. Maybe some twisty bits in this XSE sport trim. What I like is lift this cargo floor up. You are gonna get awesome storage. So easily 
you could put a couple million dollars back here. No, not in cash, in 100 grand bars, of course, for your next trip. Put that down. Now you're probably saying, well, Joe, I've seen this before. How hard is it to get that third road down? The great news is there's no electric assist. I actually like the way it's full manual control, the good old fashioned way. You're just gonna lift up, and as you're bringing it down, that headrest drops down, and then you just flip it down. One, two, three. Same thing over here, slowly put it down, boom. Look at that, now you just extended that space, that mid row will fold down, you have almost 84 cubic feet of space of room. It's one of those things, some of the competitors do have a little bit more room, so that's something that you need to take in consideration depending on how many Twinkies that you're hauling. But speaking of Twinkies, let's haul the mail to the store and get some in our Highlander XSE Sport. All right, guys, we're in the 2021 Highlander XSE. I have it in sport mode. We're going to let the automatic do its thing from a dead stop. On throttle, here we go. Nice. We're going to find out how this SUV goes through the twisty bits. I could definitely feel a difference between a standard Highlander and this one for sure, especially turning. Here comes my favorite part. On the brakes. On throttle, here we go. She's holding. Good pedal feedback. Look at this thing. <laughs> I'm corner carving in a Highlander. So let's talk about this a little bit. The automatic transmission, it shifts smooth. It just was not exactly in the right gear that I wanted to be to help me, you know, make that exit as quick as I could. It was kind of swapping through gears a little too much. When it comes to chassis though, Toyota really did a great job with isolating all four corners of the suspension and really allowing that feedback to transfer. Now, does it feel like a Supra? No. I mean, we'd just be kidding ourselves at that point. But if you need a mid-size three-row SUV and you really like the Highlander, this XSE trim, it does take it to the next level when it comes to overall handling and feel, which is great. It's not just an appearance thing. Now. Yes, the infotainment system is small. It's easy to get to, or we should say it's eight inches. I don't know, you know, some people wouldn't complain about having eight inches, but you know, some people would say that's small, but it is the standard infotainment system screen. The seats are very, very comfortable. They don't really have much, much bolstering for the twisty bits, but still very supportive without feeling too stiff and they're comfortable without feeling mushy. I do like the thickness of the steering wheel. I wish there were paddles on the back of the wheel 100%. We are going to, I'm gonna go ahead and put into manual shift mode and we are gonna use the shifter. Now, just be aware, it's that reverse pattern where you actually, to go up a gear, you push forward on, this, on the shifter. To go down a gear, you pull back. Technically, it should be flip-flopped. That would allow really the best feel as you're going up and down the, the eight-speed automatic. But visibility is awesome especially out the front. I like the amount of room there is up front as well, uh, not only for you and your passenger, um, but just for the people in the mid row as, as well. But the, the back seat, that third row is where it's really gonna hurt. Having a manual shift mode, you do have a gear indicator at the bottom of that seven inch digital display. Give it some throttle. Here we go, on throttle. Smooth shifts. Here we go. Nice, look at this. <laughs> if this isn't a testament to what they've done handling wise, I don't know what is. Back on throttle, look at that. Holds a line great. downshift once so let's talk about that a little bit I think the thing that I love the most is that linear power delivery you're getting from the naturally aspirated v6 
I really would love to see this SUV with about 325 horsepower. I think that that would really kind of help bring out the, the excellent chassis work and suspension work that is done to the vehicle. And, and like I said, when I know we're not talking about a Supra or a Toyota 86 or any kind of sports car like that, but definitely if you want that three row SUV, but you also want it to be interesting and fun to drive, if you got the right road, this Highlander does things that is, they're gonna surprise you. They really are gonna surprise you. All right, guys, here we go. Downshift a couple times, third gear, second gear. On oh, throttle, here we go. Nice. I definitely feel less body roll in this thing for sure. One of my favorite turns, here we go. Look at this thing. <laughs> and remember, you do have a G meter, which is cool. And also, I have it set up to where it's showing me how the power is being transferred front to, to rear, which is really awesome as well. But, you know, having the JBL sound system, the red interior, uh, it kind of makes the whole package uh, a little bit more so, and, and I'm digging it. It's nice to have choices, at least, if this is something that you want, something that's a little bit more on the sporty side of things. But the good news is, is I know we always talk about performance, and that meaning more horsepower, or faster zero to 60, this will be a faster Highlander through the twisty bits, guaranteed, if you know what you're doing. But you gotta know the business, to do the business. All right, guys, one more time for you. Definitely one time, more time for me. Let's go ahead. On throttle, here we go. Nice. Feeling good, look at this. <laughs> I'm in a Highlander. <laughs> Going through the twisty bits. Look at this, look at this. Nice! I'm telling you right now, this thing is kind of surprising. It really is. Is it an X5M competition? No. Uh, I don't think it's trying to be, but it's bringing a little bit more of that fun factor definitely to your travels if you need a three-row midsize SUV, and especially if you want a Highlander and you want to have that Toyota reliability and all the other things that come with it. But we're going to get back to our special parking lot and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another great day with this Toyota Highlander XSE. I first of all got to thank Zach and the rest of the crew over at Toyota USA for allowing Radies Rides access to this press fleet vehicle. It's one of those things, the midsize SUV segment. Like I said, the competition is fierce, but I'm so glad that Toyota is really just making a Highlander basically for everybody. If you want to go hybrid, if you want that more sport appearance, that extra sport feel, and definitely an interior with that red color that just pops with the silver, I think that if you're going to do midsize SUV, you want to add Highlander to your list of test drives, especially when comparing it to what the other brands are bringing to the table. But if you want to keep seeing midsize three-row SUVs on Ready's Rides, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you in the channel, click the first link, become a Radius Rides Patreon member. Click the second link, get yourself some Radius Rides merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the camera, Lori, working that camera like a champ. Show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.